before the eclipse, they call it the sturgeon moon or the green corn moon. Right. And uh, you're, you talked about your calculations. We should point out it's not just a, oh, we can see it from here. You could take a photo of the moon from out your back window, but you have done calculations as a few other people have done who are joining us up here on the bridge. Uh, this, according to you, is the precise spot we need to be to see that moon come right up and over the needle and it look, will look like it's balancing on it like somebody's spinning a basketball on their finger, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I, I even went out this morning, I got up at about 4 a.m. and I don't know if your producers back at the station got it, but I got up extra early this morning and got a picture of the setting full moon. Now it was 99.9% .9 full this morning at about 5, 5.15 a.m. So um, I got that, I practice. Uh, this is a different location, but I think I got. I know this isn't good for, for TV purposes, but here is a picture of that shot you got just this morning. That's them at the station saying, we see it. <laughs> so that's what you got this morning is the warm up. So this could be really, really fun and a good opportunity to uh, capture a shot. Get that your, your cameras even know out. If you, yeah, if you're at home, uh, even with this thick marine layer and the, the haze that we see here, uh, sometime after 10 o'clock when the moon does clear, if we don't see it in, at 9 o'clock when it comes up, you will see it about 10, 10.30 when it clears that, that, that smoke. And it's going to be an, an amazing kind of an angry red. You know? And I'm but, seeing a lot of people logging on now by the minute. They awesome. got the alert. They're checking out what's going on. We want to reset here. Chris Cashman alongside Tim Durkin. And you're going, wait, Tim Durkin, I've seen his photos. Great photographer. A lot of shots of the moon, the space needle. And tonight, it's the best of both worlds. We're combining the two as the sturgeon moon, the last full moon before the eclipse is going to rise right up and over the space needle from the vantage point that we're at here in Magnolia. We're on the bridge and this is the sweet spot as Tim says and as you can see he brought three cameras. We're going to have video, we're going to have the professional pictures and if you want to see the final product, the big payoff, make sure you uh, flip on your TV tonight to King 5. We are going to be on at 9 o'clock news. We'll do the 10 and the 11. So we're going to show you the final product, especially the video once we get that as well. Uh, and it just so happens that you think that sweet spot, the big moment's going to happen right about 9.01, 9.02. Yeah, if you're on the Magnolia Bridge, 9 o'clock is when it's going to come up. I think it, it, uh, it'll it come up on the horizon if you're out in Issaquah. Look for it about sure. 8.45 or so. Okay. Uh, here in Seattle, it's got a, it's got a clear uh, Queen Anne in the building. So for us, it's going to be right at 9 o'clock. Uh, and uh, if you're out a little further east in the mountains, times may vary. But just go out right around 9 o'clock. Stay up a little bit later if you can, because by 10, 10.30, uh, it is going to be an amazing uh, sight to see that big, beautiful red moon. Cool. The last full moon before the total eclipse. It's going to get you in the spirit. you got to get out and are see Are there it. any tips? I mean, I know most of us are working off of iPhones and, and smartphones. Everybody's got their Windows phone. Uh, yeah. What should people know? How, we're all doing it wrong, I would imagine, right, Tim? As, <laughs> as a real photographer, what are we doing wrong? You know, I've seen a lot of different uh, approaches to taking pictures of the sun <laughs> or the moon. Every yeah. time the moon comes up, uh, my, my kid sister, hi, Megan, uh, she'll send me uh, 35 pictures of her, of her moon right. taken from her shaky you know, iPhone. Facebook and my Instagram feed is because of this haze, because of the wildfires and the smoke, it's kind of amplified the sunsets. We've been getting these amazing orange Absolutely. glowing sunsets. Yep. Yep. I'm sure people are taking those right now across the water in West Seattle. But uh, So the tip, here's the your tip. The clarity, of course, is yeah. not going to be there because of the smoke. But, but what tips can you give us if people want to run out, again, to prepare for the eclipse and get set up? What I should think, they know? Uh, number one, do a little bit of homework in, adv in advance. So find uh, uh, the moon by itself is gorgeous. Luna is an amazing satellite. You get to see a full moon about once every uh, about once a month, but see if there's something you can put in there with it. Maybe it's Mount Rainier, maybe it's the Space Needle, uh, which is one of my favorite other subjects. Uh, find something else you can put the moon in to give it perspective. Number two, if you can get the moon picture in the first half hour to 45 minutes after it comes up in the horizon, it's going to be naturally filtered by the haze, and so it'll be nice and dark. You'll be able to get a nice clear picture of it that will balance well with whatever you have in the foreground. Uh, as it gets up into the sky later on, you know, an hour or two after it rises, it's really bright white. It's reflecting direct sunlight, so it's, it's much harder to get a, a, a good picture of it and balance out that light with something else. So get it in that first half hour, 45 minutes. Third, get a tripod, even an iPhone. You can go down to Glazier's camera in South right. Lake Union or Kenmore camera, great place. Get a little $10 uh, iPhone. Just jump on Amazon. It'll be at your door in about six minutes. That right? too. I mean, Amazon, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, go for it. So I, lock I, it down, right? Don't 
don't have the shaky hand. Don't fool yourself that it's going to be steady enough because just that minor shake will yes, throw yeah, it absolutely. out. Absolutely. The, the, the moon's rotation, uh, excuse me, the Earth's rotation yeah. is, uh, is causing the appearance of having that moon move very fast. Even in the eclipse, uh, that shadow is traveling at about 1,500 miles an hour. So wow. uh, it itself is moving, uh, it uh, is appearing to move very fast. So having a stable platform on a tripod to minimize shakes is one great place to start. It's about that time that some people are starting to catch wind, uh, people weighing in here on the uh, the live stream yeah, here. Yeah. Joan from Buckley's checking in. What's Somebody up, saying that sugar hot pink full moon's coming. It's yes. on its way. Uh, Maple Falls by way of Wilson. Bill, Oregon, checking in as well. A lot of people very excited. People asking, what direction should I look? I guess that depends where you are. Uh, what's in your backyard? What's in the way? You're going to want to look uh, southeast. Go just look southeast. Look towards uh, uh, Portland. Portland and Spokane. Kind of split the difference a little bit. South, southeast. Who has the advantage uh, on a night like tonight? I mean, if, if we go east, are you going to get a, you know, I, Susan here from Euphredo's watching. Uh, are there strategic spots? Obviously, we're here because we want to get that sweet spot as it rises right over the Space Needle. And a lot of people saying, it's too hazy, it's too smoky. Be patient. Just like we teach our children, be patient. It's coming. It'll come. It'll rise over there. But is there a, are there the best spots to go? I mean, a lot of people are going to head for the beach or a clearing or an overpass like this. Let's say they don't care what's yeah. in the background. Yeah. Where's the best spot to be? You know. If we don't get a good shot of the picture of the moon coming up over the Space Needle tonight, which is my favorite, I'll wait around for an hour, and when it clears that that haze tonight, it is going to be a crazy red. So at 10:30, 11 o'clock, if you're up, get out your point and shoot, get out your little cell phone camera, put it on a little tripod, or balance it, brace it against something, and take a picture of it just by itself. It will be beautiful. If you're east of the mountains, I think there's probably a little less smog. Put a tree in it put some uh, the, the mountains in it anything that's of interest to you I think personally makes it just a little bit more interesting picture but Luna by herself is a, is a beautiful subject absolutely I, I'm almost jealous of, of Lisa Ann she says what date is the eclipse she must have her TV turned off she must not have been on the internet because you can't escape that information we're 14 days away it's the 21st so be ready I'm very very jealous uh, and in fact look at this Angela weighing in saying I discovered Tim watching the big storm when you were out doing your Facebook feed in Ocean Shores. Was that crazy or what? And she's saying, I saw I saw him <laughs> taking some great photos. The guy with the American flag who was brave in the storm. Flagman, was he crazy what or what? Cool, we hung yeah. out for like an hour and played a game of pool and whatnot afterwards. But I, he was a crazy, he was a crazy guy. All the locals had King 5 on uh, during that storm. Yeah. I think Chris Daniels came down That's and finally right. got some of the pictures. That's right, he was out there braving the storm as well. But uh, yeah, we just, we had some really cool video of that, that whole thing. And it, it wasn't quite the storm that it was billed at. I think some of our meteorologist friends uh, caught a little bit of grief. But it was fun while it lasted. And I got to go down to Ocean Shores for a, a city boy. That's yeah. kind of a fun trip. More and more people uh, logging in on Facebook. They want to know what's going on. They got the alert. They said, ooh. The moon, what's happening? Uh, we want to reset for you here. Chris Cashman, I'm hanging out with Tim Durkin, wonderful photographer. I've admired his photos like a lot of you guys for a long, long time. So I said, hey, take me along, show me. Let's do something fun. And he says, well, you know, coming up around the corner while everybody's looking down the road at that eclipse, there's something cool that's going to be having called the Sturgeon Moon. It's not quite a super moon, but it's the last full moon before that eclipse. That's happening tonight. And you're, uh, it's just around the corner. Coming up at about 9.01 is when he predicts that moon will be up right over the top of the Space Needle, which we know is a bit hazy for you guys to see right now. But things will get a bit more dramatic here as we get closer. So here's one from Crystal. A question says, doesn't come out red with my cell phone. Says, what about the flashes, stuff like that? I know that seems a bit silly for yeah, a professional yeah. photographer, but there are a lot of people who are going to have the flashes on and things like that. Or what advice do you have for most people probably 95% yeah. that are just going to do it with their phones, which are great now, and they've got great lenses, you right? You can take, yeah, even the iPhone 7 has got a doubler right. on it, so you can take a pretty good picture. Uh, keep it simple. If you don't have a tripod, lean it against the window, uh, set it up so you, it's just leaning against something. Turn the flash off. The, the, the moon is, it's a couple hundred miles away, right? So it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's not, not going to not gonna reflect your, your powerful iPhone light or your, your Android. I know Android is superior, but it's, it's not going to quite reach the, the moon. So turn your flash off, save the battery, and uh, 
you know, most of the, the phones nowadays can do really cool time lapses. So do a time lapse, get creative. Uh, right. There's no wrong way to, to film the moon. And if you don't get it tonight, come out tomorrow night. It's gonna look 90% full tomorrow night. If you don't get it tonight or tomorrow night, Tim will get it. So just go on yeah. his Instagram. Come and, check and it like out. It, I got right? you covered. Don't stress. Come to timdurkin.com. Uh, we got moon pictures all day long. Anybody that's ever seen my, my pictures knows I got moons. <laughs> I got moons all over he the does. place. He so. brought three cameras. As we mentioned, uh, if you're going to be by the TV tonight, both during the 9, 10, and 11 o'clock news, we'll show you a little bit more of uh, what he captures here. We're going to show the still images. That's that camera. He's also going to be shooting video right there. Tim, I haven't distracted you. You've actually turned everything on, right? Everything is on and ready. It, right? it, it's on and ready to go. Whew. The only, uh, you know, here's a, uh, here's my little baby camera. We're we're ready to go here. Uh, camera B. Uh, we've got a six uh, six hundred millimeter uh, Nikon lens attached to a Nikon D eight hundred, and we're going to do some fun video with this if we get the chance. And then uh, camera A over here, uh, Big Bertha, I call it. Uh, that's a Nikon uh, eight hundred millimeter lens. Uh, attached to a Nikon D810. So the uh, the lens is a beautiful, beautiful 800 millimeter flash. You don't need to go out and buy one. You don't need anything quite so fancy. Uh, but that will be my primary camera. That's what we're going to try to get the, uh, it's a $16,000 lens attached to about a $4,000 camera. So cool. you, you, you don't need to go out and buy this setup for your moon pictures unless you want to get killer pictures. But okay. uh, Get creative with your iPhone. Put it up in a window, brace it with something, and just hit time lapse. Do that. It'll okay. be awesome. You're getting a lot of love here. A lot of your fans saying love his photos, love Thank that you. stuff. And Lisa Ann, by the way, I am tracking the conversation on here. I didn't get to see every comment, every detail. She's dealing with some family stuff, so we're thinking about you. The 21st, if 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 you have the time, that's when the eclipse thing's happening. But it'll be all over the TV and the internet, so you don't have to worry about that. Thinking about you and your dad, all right? So, big night. We're within striking distance, Tim. We're about it's, 20 minutes away. It's getting really from close. From my calculations, and by uh, that I mean looking at the clock. Yeah, I think uh, in about 13 to 14 minutes, if if we don't get uh, aced out, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a chance of seeing that that moon come up. And I've already seen a couple more photographers come up, and people are, are getting excited. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> right on. Uh, we got a shot at it. It's looking a little bit a little bit foggy right now, which is kind of a bummer. But guess what? Welcome to my world. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I would imagine that's a big part of the, uh, you know, the anxiety for a professional photographer is, you told me a couple of weeks ago this was going to happen. We made plans. Yeah. The moment of truth. Here we are. We've we been come to your exact it. spot. You yep. showed me the app that you use. We lined everything up. And if the weather doesn't cooperate, uh-oh. That's the way it goes, <laughs> man. I have stood out on this bridge in a pouring rainstorm waiting for a break in the weather right. uh, to get a shot of a, of a moon like this tonight. So uh, like my brother in Hawaii says, if you don't uh, go fishing, you don't go catching. So right. tonight we're out here, we're giving it a shot. This is what he captured this morning, by the way, if you didn't see this. He did a test shot at about 5 a.m. Not I'll, too shabby for a test shot. I'll post that, uh, I'll put that up on Facebook. I didn't show anybody, I, I tweeted it out earlier today, but I haven't put it on Facebook. It wasn't, a, it was a pretty good picture. I'll put it up in our comments that section. That would be above my mantle there would be lighting. You'd have to walk around it to get into my house. I like to use it. That's his throwaway. That's that's the raw. If my photo. sisters are watching, I know that I, I got out of bed at about 4 a.m. to go get that shot. So despite rumors uh, that I don't like mornings, I got up very early to go get that shot. So yeah, let's go. If you if you uh, if you want to go check it out, I'll go post it here in a, in a few minutes. If this if this doesn't work, I'll post the one I got from this morning above the Space Needle, 99.9% .9 full. It's a pretty cool shot. It's getting very dramatic because we're now a little less than 20 minutes away from when we expect that to happen. No sign of the moon. Uh, I haven't gotten any updates saying the moon's been delayed. Uh, that's one thing that you can, you can count on, right? I'm sorry. No delays in the moon rising. No, the moon. Uh, <laughs> if it doesn't, uh, it, if it doesn't come up somewhere, uh, we've we've got bigger problems than anticipated. So uh, we may not be able to see it, but it is actually, it's probably up right now. It's probably just breaking the horizon where you are. Who's? Let's see it in the comments, you guys. If you guys are seeing the moon from where you're at, I want to see pictures. Yeah, I we don't got wanna... folks east of the mountains already. So if you're already seeing something, yeah. let us know. Put it up here in the comments, you guys. I want to see your, your your pictures from uh, tonight. It's the last big full moon before the eclipse on the 21st. Uh, to get a lot of people are going to want to know that, by the way. Just for the record, the eclipse has got to be like your Super Bowl. What are you going to be doing for that? 
So I've got spot A and spot B ready to go. I think uh, I'm gonna, uh, spot A right now is to go east of the mountains to get to Sun Valley, Idaho, uh, where I've got uh, a couple friends. Uh, it is on the line of totality, so I'll get to watch the, the entire total solar eclipse, which is gonna be completely, it'll be different than if you stay here in Seattle, which I'm very tempted to do, where it'll be about 90% uh, eclipse. But at 100%, you'll get to see the sun's corona, which, uh, uh, I haven't seen since like 1979, I think when I was in grade school in Issaquah, Washington. So uh, here in two weeks, I'm gonna go for it. We're going to Sun Valley with any luck. Uh, we'll get to the 100% totality line, uh, get the same kind of a setup that you see here. And uh, Gail checking in from Idaho says, no moon yet. Okay, Gail, let us know if you see it. Thank you very much. By the way, much. we skipped right over one big detail okay. why Andrew Tucker is asking us, why is it called the Sturgeon Moon? Also sometimes called the green corn moon. Great, you know, I, uh, uh, I checked out Farmer's Almanac earlier today as I do before every full moon. And uh, they say that the Native Americans in and around the Great Lakes right. called it the sturgeon moon because that's when they were biting. That's when they were catching most fish. And uh, uh, for my fishermen friends out there, I think they'll attest that yeah, when that full moon is up, uh, the bite is on. So that's why you get it, the sturgeon moon. The green corn thing, I think the farm and almanac talked about that's when the, the, the fruit and the harvest starts to, to ripen and it's ready to go. Right. I don't Love eat it. a lot of fruit or, or vegetables. Andrew, so. good? Good answer for Andrew. And we're good now question. inching towards the moment of truth. And uh, right, right as it does happen, we are going to uh, sign off of our live feed here. And if you want to see the results, if you want to see what we capture officially, Head on over to the TV side on King 5, uh, both at 9, 10, and 11. We're going to show you some of the photographs, and we will condense the video as well, and we will run that for you. Hopefully, this hazy sky will cooperate. We'll definitely capture something. It might not be as crystal clear as we might like, but we will capture it, and we'll share it with you, and we encourage you guys to share as well. A lot of you guys are going to wake up and see this online and say, I missed it. Don't worry. That's why we got Tim here. He never misses anything. Anything worth seeing, he captures it. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here for you, Christopher. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Thank here you. for the King 5 audience. We're very excited. I'm excited. Uh, I'd be more excited if uh, if we could see downtown. Yeah, the skyline is starting to light up it's, right on cue. It's uh, but the still, Emerald. no moon. Not yet. We're waiting for it. I'm confident it's going to pop out any second. I want to see them in the, in the comment fields. If you got a shot Let's see. of the moon, Everybody please see put it, it in the yet. comments. Uh, uh, Shad's checking in a little late and says, what time? We're here where we are on the Magnolia Bridge. We're expecting about 9.01 to see the moon, that sturgeon moon, right above the needle. We're trying to get that effect where it will be hovering right above the needle. So it could be a very cool view, very cool vantage point from right here. Come on, moon, where are you, Luna? Dan already liked your Facebook page, as many people should. Thank you very much, I brother. love waking much up and seeing what you captured while I was asleep. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, you should see, come see some of my street photos. Uh, Jennifer say, says she just got home. She's a like, great. Now I got to run right back outside. Jennifer, you shouldn't have come <laughs> inside in the first place. Didn't Get know there's something cool to doing? see. This is not a time to fool around. Uh, tell your family you'll come talk to them later. See, Jeffrey's putting, you know, turning that frown upside down and saying, you know, these copper moon, these, you know, the clear moon's cool, but these copper ones are cool. I agree. Just about every night I look out the skylight of my house and go, holy cow, is, Check it is out, anybody folks. seeing uh, this? It's amazing. There's, it's, there's not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. The haze that we're seeing is caused by those horrible forest fires in BC. Yeah. Once that moon gets at about 45 degrees in the horizon, which should be right around, I don't know, 11 o'clock, go outside, look up in the sky, and behold that incredible orange moon it should be just amazing to see you might not be able to see it here in the next few minutes it's really hazy but go out around 10 30 11 o'clock when it clears that haze get a picture of it we want to see it uh mr velasco says i'm sorry that i'm late to the party where are you guys exactly we are in magnolia we're on the bridge here this is the vantage point where we are this is where tim has calculated we should be standing if we want to get that effect. Again, you can see it just about anywhere that you are, but this is the specific vantage point we're trying to get to get the moon rising right over the needle. And he's gonna snap a photo as it's bouncing right on top. He got some test shots this morning, looks great. You can see he's got it all lined up there. There's his still camera. Still a lot hazy, he's we're got, hopeful. He's rolling on video side as well. You guys seeing anything, any moon? Nothing. Okay. No. 
You holler. And we're going to take you My right eyes, up I'm until sure I can't see anymore, so the moment let me of know truth. if you see the damn moon. And then shortly after we capture that shot, we're going to break down the feet here because we got to take these images and get them back so we can put it on the TV side. So we're going to show you exactly what we see, and then shortly after, we're going to kill this feed, and we're going to take the footage, and we're going to get it over and get it ready for TV so we can share it with everybody. So make sure you check back in a little later on as well. We will show you everything that we see. Tim currently monitoring three cameras and mentoring. A little bit. I Let me see photographers show up. These days. Uh, Tim like introduced himself. He says, "Hey, that's why I'm here. I like everybody. Want to see? You got anybody you want to say right hi to, to really quick? He walked right up on it. What's your name, man? Uh, right on. Do you have a? Uh, are you on Instagram? No. Where, what's your What's your handle on Instagram? Uh, it's Punk Pixels. B A N K Pixels. Punk Pixels. Go check it out. Uh, he's a He's a photographer. What about you, man? What's your name, brother? Rob. Rob Tim Durkin, man. Good to meet you. You online oh, somewhere? Online. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. I, I'm not online. Oh, you're, 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 you know, good for you. Wait a minute. This is a breaking news story. This this is, ladies and gentlemen, right here is the man who's not online anywhere. That's him. We found him. <laughs> you do this for the pleasure of taking pictures then? Well, I'll get into it. All right, man. Well, uh, stop by timdurkin.com. I give tips every once in a while. Drop an email if you got any questions. Hey, Tim. Right yep. Got a question here from uh, Andrew. Okay. He was so happy with our explanation of what exactly the Sturgeon Moon is. Yeah. He says, do you have any photography classes? Uh, funny you should ask. Uh, the answer is yes. We'll be given a class in uh, October at Glaciers, and we're going to post that uh, this week. So uh, go to either timdurkin.com or go to Glaciers, you know, the camera store, and check out their October uh, workshops. I'll be, I think I'm in the first or second week of October. Come check it out. It's going to be an hour and a half in the classroom, then an hour and a half up in the streets. Then we're going to come back for a half hour and critique and look at pictures. It's going to be awesome. Mr. Velasco's checking back in. He says, hey, what's the longest lens you're using? Uh, we got uh, Big Bertha, which is coming in at 800 millimeters. Wow. That's Nikon's biggest lens. You're going to have to drop about 15 grand to find one, though. They are expensive. Wow, we. There's no finer lens in the world. Baby Bertha. Uh, which I've had now, I've had baby Bertha for about five years. That's 600 millimeter piece of glass. And it's, uh, you can find them used now for about six or seven grand. I think new they're gonna cost you about 10, but, uh, but uh, they're big honking pieces of glass that, uh, that take really exceptional pictures. You don't need them necessarily. My last ones, uh, itty bitty Bertha, is the 70 to 200 lens. And that's uh, Canon and Nikon, both make a great uh, shot uh, or a, um, uh, a 70 to 200 lens. Those are about 2,500 bucks. Those are a lot more affordable pieces of glass and they take amazing pictures. So 200, 600, 800. I think we got our focal ranges covered. Wow. And uh, Crystal's asking if we're going to post all this. Absolutely. She's got to run. Uh, whatever we capture here tonight, we're going to post. So stay tuned to King, King5, King5.com, the Facebook page. We will post what we capture here tonight online so you can catch up with it later tonight or tomorrow morning, whatever we get. Uh, Tri-City's checking in saying all haze, Dang. frowning emo emoji. So it's just the drama is building, the suspense. You can cut it with a haze cutter. <laughs> So we are just a couple of minutes away. Nine o'clock news is getting ready to kick All off right. on King Five. They'll probably take. It's there. The moon is up. Our it's image. actually it's it's uh it's within three minutes. I'm gonna just kind of start putting things together here. Tim said, "Look at Tim. He's he's getting giddy. See, I would." I would assume nothing's happening, but he says it's go time. He's getting ready. Camera A. Tim has three cameras out here tonight, again, for folks who maybe just checked into the live stream a little bit late. We are hanging out in Magnolia from a, a great vantage point here with photographer extraordinaire Tim Durkin. I'm always drooling over his photos, so I said, hey, would you ever take me along? He said, absolutely. we got a cool opportunity coming up as everybody's focusing down the road. On the 21st, of course, is going to be the eclipse. That's 14 days from now. But tonight, little did you know, 
Tonight is a special opportunity to go out and test your skills as the Sturgeon Moon. Really, it's just the last full moon before the eclipse, and it's going to probably give us another one of those orange glowing moons. If it can get up past this haze, we are hoping to capture it hovering directly above the Space Needle. With any luck, and it's there, it's, it's where it needs to be right now. Uh, within the next couple of minutes, if it's going to come out, it's going to be amazing. The haze, though, kind of bumming me out a little bit. But that's how it goes sometimes. I've stood on this bridge in the fog and the rain waiting for the moon to come, and it, it never did. And then uh, when you least expect it, uh, she'll make an appearance. So never give up on the moon. Don't give up on Luna. She's tricky. And you said ultimately, no matter what, once it gets up above this haze, what, about 10 o'clock tonight? If you're up around, yeah, 10, Another 10 30, hour. even 11 o'clock, that moon, uh, because I can, I can see the haze is much thinner uh, towards the, 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 up at the center of the sky. But it's still there. It's still going to turn that moon crazy orange. So if you're going to be up before midnight, do yourself a favor. Go outside. Check out the moon. It's going to be an amazing uh, color of red. Um, if it's going to come out now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out any minute. But it's so hazy, you know, uh, Chris. I'm worried yeah. that, that we might get uh, aced on a on our on our prime picture here. Could get hazed out. We might get hazed out, and that does happen. That's part of being a a professional photographer. Sometimes uh, you don't get the picture that you came out to and you planned for. As you, know. you said, you get the photo you were meant to get. You get the photo you were meant to get, <laughs> not always right. that you planned on. So uh, we'll manage something fun here tonight. I think the. Uh, the haze is going to be kind of a bummer, but let's wait and see for a couple minutes. By the way, Antonio saying that's his new favorite quote, never give up on the moon. Don't give up on the moon, Antonio. It's a funny little uh, satellite. Did you know that the moon, for example, comes up in a different spot every night by a few degrees? Uh, it goes a little bit further north, then it stalls out, and then it heads back down south. A few degrees every night, it's, it's wobbling back and forth. And... It does wobble. When it's coming into its perigee, it wobbles in a little bit. And when it's headed out of its perigee into its apogee, it's, it actually wobbles. Uh, so you can see the bottom side a little bit more. Uh, it's a funny little satellite. And every time I think I know what it's going to do, it shows me that I can be wrong a lot. So uh, <laughs> you just come ready to take pictures. That's half the fun of being a photographer. Anyway. You're never exactly sure what you're going to get. Well, Nancy says she's watching from Yuma, Arizona, and the moon looks awesome from oh, there. Oh, if you get, can you get a picture, Nancy? Put a, even a, uh, get a picture with your cell phone and just put it in the comments. Let me, let me see what you got down there in Arizona. Yeah, we share got a lot that of friends view. in Arizona. I love Arizona. I'm now, going, I'm going down to film the U2 concert in, uh, in September. Anybody fun. else? Fun. Yeah, I'm going down. To Road a, trip. Oh yeah, big time. That's going to be a fun show. So while we're waiting for this surge in moon that may or may not appear as it's supposed to right above the needle because of the haze it'll eventually pop up once it gets above yep. and higher yep. uh, a lot of folks are, are of course wanting your expertise on the eclipse yeah uh you know if you're here in seattle it's not going to be a complete eclipse right it's only about like 92 93 percent will be covered absolutely and i think you and i are like gonna... six months of the year here right i mean yeah exactly uh if you're you gonna go to oregon if right? get, yeah there's a center line go online there's a million places that show you exactly where the center line is going to be I'm going to try and get to Sun Valley, Idaho, where the eclipse will be at totality, 100%. A lot of people I know are going down. Uh, my friends from GeekWire uh, and a lot of other people are going down right. uh, to Madras, down in, down in Oregon, where it's going to be 100%. you got to get there a couple days in, in advance, or it's not going to happen. The roads, they're expecting over a million people at some of these campgrounds wow. in and around Oregon. So if I'll you're just not, watch your feed. How about that? That's the easy way to do it. I will, go, I will probably not sleep for three days to see if I can get a couple good shots of that eclipse. And I think you and I are wow. going to try and give a, uh, a quick how to photograph. We're going to do an, a separate tutorial, an official, because I know a lot of you want to know about the lenses, the settings. What does this guy do? We're going to do that separately. So just uh, keep it tuned to King 5. We're going to do that. Shortly. That's great. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do that. That's going to be awesome. 
Uh, in the meantime, Jessica wants to know where's your favorite place in Seattle to get pictures of Seattle, which is what got our conversation started in the first place. I noticed how many great photos you were taking, and I said, I want to just follow you and have you show us where the best spots are. Yeah. That led us to this moment. Uh, where are your favorite spots? You know, there's the, the number one spot in the city. I think everybody here can agree. Corey, come on. It's going to be Cary Park, right? Yeah. yeah. Cary Park is where uh, we like to go to get that 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 beautiful shot of the Space Needle of downtown and Mount Rainier, along with the ferry boats. You're not going to beat it. Has it been done a million times? Yes. Go do it a million and one times because it never gets old. Number two, Alki. Get out to right. Alki. Get the city during a storm. Get the city during a sunset. Or get the city during my favorite is a sunrise, which is actually kind of hard. I, I joked earlier, I don't like morning times. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> but that sun coming up uh, in between some of those big buildings is beautiful. Number three, uh, you know, I like Jose Rizal Bridge. It's also right. a very popular place. Uh, That's you, where you see the photo through the chain link fence, how that kind of is opened and you can see perfectly through the, that's where that's happening. You bet, it's, uh, it's a, and then you get the freeway too, uh, which is, you get the streaky car trail lights, yeah. which is really cool. That's a great place right. uh, to go. Anywhere along the waterfront, you guys, just walk, the, walk from Pier 70 down to Coleman Dock. It'll take you about half an hour and uh, just walk out to each and every one of those piers. I've done it a hundred times. If you have not walked to the end of every available pier in Seattle, uh, you're missing out. They each have a little bit different secret to, to divulge. So get down to the waterfront and uh, check out uh, along uh, all those little piers. Probably my, probably my favorite place is the waterfront, you bet. Well, we are now at 9.06. So as you said, it's already where it needs to be. We're just not seeing it. It's uh, It would be right exactly where I want it to be, which is on top of the Space Needle right now. You guys seeing anything? Nope, nothing. nothing. So we've got the top photographers. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them out here. And again, it, Tim came out just to get a right test here. just this morning. And this is what he saw at about 5 a.m. this morning. So this is the place to be. This is the sweet spot. It's just creating dramatic reality TV. And nothing is more real than staying out here on the Magnolia Bridge. Right, this is where the dramatic music and the announcer comes in. It says, coming up, will Chris and Tim look like dummies when the moon doesn't appear? It happens. Then we go to commercial break, then we come back, and maybe it's there, maybe it's not. We the, beg for your forgiveness. The first thing that we agreed upon was, A, coffee is the fruit of the gods. Right. Uh, that's the yes. first thing we come to an we understanding over when, we first, yeah. when, we, when we first sure. met. Then we uh, talked about this location and the possibility of it raining or right. what I did not expect massive forest fires to kind of blot it out. But yeah. part of becoming a great photographer is rolling with the punches. So if you don't get the shot, don't give up, come back, come back, come back. I've been coming right. to this bridge uh, since 2013 and I failed a wow. hundred times before I got a couple of my uh, more uh, famous pictures. So I screwed up so many hundreds of pictures. Uh, <laughs> For the first year, it's ridiculous. Trial and error. So don't well, give digital up. film's cheap, right? Don't you just snap away? It's, there's no limit to it. Yeah, thousands yeah. of pictures. I can take probably on the combined. I can probably take uh, close to ten thousand pictures on all three cameras. So at this point, it's almost nine ten. Yep. The shot that we were hoping to get looks like that's not going to give you the payoff you wanted. Yep. But you'll notice nobody's leaving because once it does get above that haze, yeah, you're going to get that big, beautiful. That's right. You're going to so, get something yeah, worth sharing. For anybody here. that wants to stick around, you know, uh, it's it's going to be, it'll be another hour before that moon pops up be, between the haze. But it's it's going to be spectacular. It's going to be amazing if you can get out there and get your iPhone or a, even a point and shoot on it is, is all the better. Yeah. What's that? Were you here yesterday as well? Uh, I was. I was indeed. Yep. Uh, the Park. Well, tell you what, Tim. Oh, fantastic. We're going to get ready to close out okay. this live feed here. We're going to switch over to the TV side. We're still recording. Anything we get, we're going to share so you can just hang out. But we're getting ready to flip over to the TV side. And uh, we're going to share anything we can find with you on uh, King 5 on the TV side and, of course, online right here. So thanks for joining us for this experiment. We're sorry we did not see what we hoped to see. Look at all of these. Look at all of these photographers with the giant cameras waiting to see what you were waiting to see. When we capture it, we'll all share right, it with brothers. you.
Thanks for hanging out. How you doing? If you have a cool photo, make sure you share it with us on our page. Yes, sir. And as uh, good to meet you, one of our Kevin. Facebook fans pointed out, Let's be careful, it. guys, yeah. when you ask people to share pictures of the full moon. Well played. Well played, Katie. <laughs> Over and out from Magnolia. Adios, my friends. There, they just ended it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, we're supposed to do TV, and I'm a little bit worried though because we don't have anything to pay off for TV. Well, all we got is our one shot from. Do a straight live and positive spin, I guess. Right? Yeah.